What's going on guys? This is Empty Box and today we got some global challenge for you up from Inalago. So as always it's going to be a 25 minute timed race but we're doing things a little bit differently. Not doing this live because I needed to focus, concentrate, and needed to absolutely 100% positively make sure I didn't have any hardware issues or anything like that which meant no recording, no commentary, focus. I'll explain a little bit more why later on in the race uh, but let's just put it this way. Going into this race, I had an eight-point lead in the opening night's little league that uses the iRacing official point scoring for the first race of the week. The guy that was behind me in the points was starting directly in front of me, and he is my nemesis, the same guy who every week runs basically the exact same speed as me. We are definitely evenly matched. The only way I'm ahead of him in the points is the fact that I've managed to keep it on the track more than he has and he's had terrible luck such as getting completely destroyed by a Kia at Sonoma while leading. It's definitely going to be close keep that in mind there is a little extra intensity and obviously we need to make sure that we keep it on the track and we need to make sure we finish you got to keep those points in mind so it's going to be something a little bit different something that was completely new to me because I never care about the championship points or anything like that but uh, hey when there's prizes on the line, you got to keep it on the track. So let's go ahead and get the race started. And as you can see, the five car here, our nemesis starting directly in front of us. If this race ended in right as we cross the stripe, he'd probably actually end up leading the points. So we need to make sure that we finish ahead of him. Just because we are ahead of him right now doesn't mean we will be if we finish behind him because we won't. Eight points with iRacing point scoring is not a lot at all. That is basically one position. So anyways, turn one, lap one. Very easy, very smooth. I have my teammate back there behind me to my inside left there going into turn one. Cake. Easy as can be. And the race is on. And the race is on. Now I'm going to talk about a bunch of different things throughout this video. Uh, some of them related to iRacing, some of them related to some other things and all that stuff. But... Uh, well, while we're early on here, let me just go ahead and say, you know, thank you for supporting my channel as it's grown faster than expected. Honestly, the fact that there's 50 people out there who would like to watch me drive around in circles and listen to me talk to myself is kind of weird, honestly. But uh, it, it's great, honestly. I'm really shocked by the fact that there are people out there who enjoy this kind of stuff, but... Uh, Hey, if you guys enjoy it, there's definitely more around the corner, and, you know, hey, it's just fun. That's what it is. Serious when we need to be serious, not so serious when we need to be not so serious. But uh, as my channel continues to grow, uh, I have noticed something that uh, is kind of a trend that I just want to go ahead and uh, write this down, a.k.a. throw this out there and make sure you guys are aware if you watch this video. I'm pretty much going to have a 100% no trolls slash fanboy lunacy policy that's not to say you can't disagree i mean honestly if you don't like iRacing i don't care doesn't matter I, it really doesn't to me uh you know i play all these sims just because i upload a lot of iRacing doesn't mean i'm an iRacing fanboy or anything like that uh because like i said in my sim racing 101 video for iRacing it's not really all that good except for the fact that the racing is fantastic which once again you'll see what i'm talking about uh, but, you know, stupid comments, you're going to get deleted, and you're probably going to get blocked, in which case, don't bother making the stupid comment, because it's going to take me less time to delete your comment and block you to prevent you from making another stupid comment than it will to not make a stupid comment in the first place. At the end of the day, I make these videos for fun, and coming home and seeing a stupid comment is just stupid, honestly. It really is kind of makes me wonder what you are doing with your life that you have time to make stupid comments kind of should make you wonder what i'm doing with my life to post videos of me driving around in circles on youtube <laughs> hey nobody has a life but uh no seriously that stuff is gonna have a zero tolerance policy going forward uh and i think it should one of the dumbest thing within sim racing is just the fanboyism that revolves around things and it's just a joke. I mean, honestly, you know. Well, I mean, a sidetrack here, but a set of Corsa, for example. For whatever reason, people are already hailing it as the greatest thing since sliced bread. There's a little 
minute and a half lap of Silverstone released with the McLaren, and all of a sudden people are like, oh my god, it's the best sim ever. Look at the physics. The physics are perfect. You haven't even played it besides a freaking tech preview with a car that understeered like garbage because that's how it handles. It handles good. It's fun to drive, but you know, you've yet to even actually really taste the game. It's like saying iRacing is brilliant because the Ford GT is that fantastic. And it is that fantastic, honestly. But, you know, it's like, you know, that's not necessarily indicative of the entire package, not the whole thing. Let's actually see what it is, especially considering, if you remember, in the tech preview, having a higher frame rate automatically made you go faster, which is kind of game-breaking for a racing sim. Honestly. It's 100%. It, it just is. Let's uh, cool our jets and remember that uh, every last sim does something better than another. You know, iRacing does the online racing superior to anyone else, no competition, honestly. You know, R Factor 2 has a great thing going on and is going to become stronger in the future. It seems, you know, Seto Corsa likely will be a very strong contender from the driving standpoint. I'm just worried about what else is going to happen with it, but. You know, Project Car is still sitting over there improving miles every build, but, you know, it's going to be close. They all do different things, and they all, you know, they all have a use. They sell terabytes in the hard, or terabytes in the hard drives. Hard drives in the terabytes now. There's really no reason to play one and only one sim. So, just because I upload one sim predominantly doesn't mean it's the only sim I play and the only sim I believe is worth playing because quite frankly if I had iRacing league structure you know type system within game stock car 2012 I would be playing that and only that but alas they don't so I'm here but it was actually good racing because that's what I enjoy so that's that and god I love the CTSV and there we go and yes I'm not going to lie, my heart skipped a beat there, because commonly what ends up happening when someone runs wide in that corner in a car like this, they instantly come back onto the racing line, and I was on the racing line. Thankfully, he kept it out of me. He did the right thing. He uh, kept it nice and wide through there and allowed us to move up. My teammate moved up as well, so I got a little bit of a buffer zone. More importantly, I got points in hand, as well as the fact that... Uh, I also have a teammate behind me, so I'm not going to do anything stupid. Uh, so now it's just focusing on this two car, getting by him. We are going to pass this two car, I can guarantee it. In fact, if I did this commentary live, that's what half this commentary would be. I'm going to pass this car. I need to pass this car. I can pass this car. Come on, let's pass this car. That's what the commentary would have been. You're not missing out on anything. And the engine sounds sound like iRacing engine sounds anyways. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, okay, we got the anti-troll policy out. We got the uh, disclaimer as to what this race is. Uh, and there's a CTSV noob making it look much more difficult than it really is. Which brings me to my points uh, with this car. Uh, going into this race, which made this really kind of odd from my perspective, was I have been struggling the last couple of weeks. I've just been slow. I haven't felt the connection with the car. I haven't felt at one with the machine, you know. Just kind of been all over the place, just not really felt comfortable at all, which I was basically working from the same setup from week to week, making the tweaks that I needed. And honestly, the setup wasn't bad or anything. It, it just... I constantly felt like it was slowing me down, which I know it was. But here's the interesting and fun little fact. Everybody who drives a Cadillac probably knows that the baseline setup is not slow at all. It is bad fast. The baseline setup with the Cadillac, if you can drive it, which is a huge disclaimer because it is a difficult car to drive with that setup, is very, very fast. Very fast. You just have to be able to drive it. So I'm like... 15 minutes before qualifying, I'm thinking, my lap times are not competitive with what is being posted in the forums right now. I'm struggling. I, I just don't feel like I have the pace if I'm going to run this race and be up front because I need to be up front. I know the points are close. I got to do something. 
So I switched the baseline setup on and made a couple of differential changes, which you absolutely must do if you're going to use the baseline setup because that is why the baseline setup drives like crap. And I instantly started to feel more comfortable with the car. You know, you see me working the wheel a lot, but, you know, a lot of that wasn't really terrifying. You know, honestly, people say iRacing has become ice racing and there's no grip and the cars are overly difficult to drive. Well... You need to learn how to drive the CTSV because then everything is easy except for the V8 supercar, which is just goofy. But yeah, I, I really felt uh, comfortable once I did that. Like the car was more alive, it was more difficult to drive, but at the same time, it wasn't as difficult because I didn't feel like I needed to push as hard. I had to let the car float through the corners more, let the car actually turn rather than trying to fling it on into the corner chuck the car around the corner and then just go as fast as can be um, just a lot more letting the car work letting the car roll which is definitely beneficial that's something that the cadillac really benefits from being a very big heavy car actually it's not even big it's just heavy but um so yeah that was kind of interesting for me i don't usually make setup changes that late uh in the going but uh, we did and it worked out uh nicely i must say but then there's the issue of the Cadillac tires, which if you guys have never driven this car before, uh, you've probably heard me mention it in my commentaries, you know, live. Or this car is really sensitive to tire heat. The tires on this car, I don't know if it's just the car itself or the tires themselves, but for whatever reason, it just feels like the tires have no grip at all when they are warm. Uh, you know, if you overheat them, if you get too aggressive, if you go into drift car mode, what ends up happening is you get perpetual driftage. Uh, you know, the tires heat up, and then you're sliding through the next corner because you have no grip, and then the tires heat up more, and then you slide into the next corner because the tires have no grip, and then the tires heat up more, and it just keeps going until you get to a straightaway, which, you know, that's one of the fun things with this car. Uh, you know, there are 25-minute races, so tire management isn't the most critical thing out there. But there are four distinct stages to a Cadillac race, if you ask me. The sticky, new, cold, fresh <laughs> tires that are scary fast. The car is definitely scary to drive on cold tires, if you ask me. But it is amazingly fast. It is super fast. Uh, in fact, it's sometimes like competitive with the GT2 <laughs> car, which just doesn't seem like it should be. But then I think, well, maybe, maybe it could be. I don't know. But it's really fast on cold tires uh, then there's the tires have come up to pressure the tires are warm everybody's kind of settled in into a groove and everything the car handles nicely it's not trying to kill you constantly you know it, it's easy to drive there it's forgiving you know as forgiving as the Cadillac is ever going to get then you come into the stage that you're going to spend most of the time in and this is the most difficult part the third stage is where the tires are sliding around as you can see me working the wheel now you know, the car's getting a lot more difficult to control. It's not insanely difficult to control. It can definitely be worked. You just have to be more mindful. You have to be more careful. You have to be more aware of what is going on and what the you know car is basically telling you. Here, if you get a slide, you are done. Game over. You know, you might as well just go ahead and park it because it's it's screwed. You know, if you spin the tires, you know, way too heavily. If you get into drift car mode. You know, anywhere but the start of a long straightaway or close to it, you're pretty much screwed, especially here at Interlagos with the long corners, you know, this infield section that's got a lot of cornering and, you know, really got to make up time there. You know, you just have to be very careful. You really do. But that is what makes it fun because, you know, you saw me drop back a little bit there and now I've kind of closed the gap up. That's not because the guy in front of me sped up or did anything different. In terms of lap time, the lap times were fairly consistent, but I just dropped back a little bit, cooled my tires off, and tried to make a run back up front. Uh, just adds an extra little element to it. I do wish these races were longer, but unfortunately they are 25 minutes. They're a sprint series, obviously, uh, and they're going to be staying that way next season, which brings me conveniently, yes, nice segue right there, I must say, to next season's schedule. The next season schedule was released uh, recently, I believe yesterday, 
And for those of you guys out there who are new to iRacing, because I know there are several of you guys out there who uh, watch these videos, uh, the schedule has bugs and issues and, and stupid things on it that won't be there. Uh, for example, when the schedule was first released, this series didn't exist at all. There was no order to race a Cadillac or a Kia, but that was just because they messed up the uh, production of the schedule, and that's been changed uh, since then. But there's sometimes things that just make no sense. Uh, stupid track selection, such as Prototype GT, was last season supposed to run at Road Atlanta short when the series is quite clearly supposed to be at Road Atlanta full and that only makes sense because that's what they race in the real life and you know that obviously is a series with a lot of cars and tossing them onto a smaller circuit is not a good idea so but uh, that's been mostly taken care of but in terms of the se next season it's very interesting because there are a lot of cars I'm interested in running I pretty much have to already say I'm running the sprint car next season because uh, because Randy told me to, I guess. And I said, well, I was thinking about running for like the last two seasons. And he's like, well, here's the paint scheme. <laughs> Thank, thanks. So going to do that. Going to be fun. Really looking forward to that, honestly. Uh, should be a bucket load of fun. Uh, week two, uh, quite possibly... I think it's week two at least. Quite possibly the most awesomest car combination ever featured in an iRacing official series ever. Because this makes no sense at all. I was literally like, that sounds absolutely terrifyingly awesome. I want to race. Let's make it happen. Right here, right now. Let's do this. Maybe this was a scheduling fail basically you know where they get something completely wrong but silver crown at watkins Glen. for those of you guys who don't know what the silver crown is it's basically a beefed up version of the sprint car a little bit more power a little bit more weight but still no wings nothing like that holy wtf that is gonna be insane I, honestly i'm just like bring it on i am so ready for that because it's gonna be stupid difficult stupid insane it really is. But uh, the Radical is going to be going to a 25-minute series. Uh, I'm not sure what they run now, but it's going to be the shortest series outside uh, the Global Challenge Series and Rookies, obviously, which makes me go, I wouldn't mind running the Radical. I really wouldn't. It sounds like fun. The car is fun to drive. Uh, it's obscenely grippy. That thing has tons of grip. It has grip, and then you think you have all of the grip out of it. No, there's more grip left. But it's ice racing. Uh, you know, that's a car that I haven't driven yet in a you know actual race. I'm definitely looking forward to driving. So, I think I very well could end up driving the Radical for my little diversionary series. Uh, and then there's also Global Challenge. I love driving the Cadillac. This car is so much fun. The raceability is off the charts. You know, this race isn't as good as what I had in Mossport Week One. Which, if you haven't seen that, it's in the description. You should go watch it again if you haven't. If if you have. Because, God, I was watching that the other day because someone said something in the forums about the best racing you've ever had on iRacing. And I was just like, I have to go watch that race again because I can't believe that actually happened. <laughs> like, I can't believe that. So, I just love this car. It is so much fun to drive. It is a pain in the butt to drive, but it is a riot because you get races like this where you're just constantly trying to find something. And here's a pro tip. If you're driving the faster car in a mixed class series, when you pass the slower car, go for it. Don't lollygag. Either do or don't. And of course, being that we're battling for the lead, uh, definitely going to have to go for it. There's no other option in that situation. So... So that's that, but you know the radical looks interesting. Global challenge, you know, if Kevin's gonna end up putting up a opening night series again, I'll definitely run it again because it fits into my schedule as well as the fact that it's just fun. Honestly, this season has been fun in this car. You know, I only do one race a week in this car, but pretty much every week that one race has been exciting and awesome, at least from my standpoint. Now I wouldn't mind necessarily driving the Kia next season, however. Turn one, lap one, <laughs> ended up taking out a couple of Kias 
here in this race because the Cadillacs are eh. The back end of the Cadillac field isn't the strongest at all. I do not want to be around them at all, ever. Uh, it's just kind of a product of the car being really difficult to drive and being a free car available to everyone, but it still doesn't change the fact that the back half of the Cadillac grid is just scary. Very scary. Don't want to be anywhere around there. Uh, but if you can run up front in one of these races, you will definitely, definitely have a great race. But anyways, Prototype GT, that's still around, although it's changed significantly. And with, uh, well, how do I want to word this? Well, let's just put it this way. Ding dong, the fixed is dead, the fixed is dead, the fixed is dead. Ding dong, the fixed is dead. Yeah, I'm dancing. I'm dancing right now while I'm singing that. I mean that. Fix series. You gone. Get out of here. GTFO. Don't come back. We don't need your kind here. We don't, honestly. Fix series has been removed. They said that they're going to start providing setups for every car, every track, uh, as they possibly can, which would definitely be great. Uh, although you can still find competitive setups in the forums, and setups don't really matter anyways, and you can make a setup in less than 15 minutes just by reading descriptions, as I've already proven. But, uh, anyways, 45-minute races, honestly, uh, it, that's too short for me, to be perfectly honest. I would like the races to be longer, but if that enables stronger participation throughout the week, you know, I'm definitely all for it. You know, yes, I'll miss that pit stop. I'll miss that pit stop greatly, but if it means I can race more often, great. Absolutely fantastic. You know, because I really would not mind at all running all three cars in the same season, as crazy as that sounds. I just love driving every car in that series. I love the series, the class dynamics, you know. I... I, I've always loved that style of sports car racing and to have a series you know, that actually works you know, in some more fashion. Just fantastic. You know, it, it really is. And plus the fact that I honestly preferred the P2 cars back when they could challenge the P1 cars, which the HPD is from that era, uh, for you guys out there who didn't know. So yeah, our P2 car is literally as fast as a P1 car on most circuits that uh, are fairly twisty. Be pretty interesting here at Interlagos to have a P2 car from then and a P1 car from then, but uh, you know, it's just fun. I really like that car, the HPD. The Corvette is a blast to drive, and plus, every time you pass someone, you know that they hear in their speakers that lovely seven-liter V8. Just, it's just like I still cannot get over how good it sounds in this build. Which segue? Yeah, you see what I did there? New build. Obviously, we're coming to the end of the season. For you new guys out there, this might be your first go around, but every 13 weeks, iRacing gets a fairly substantial update. Well, sometimes it gets a substantial update. Sometimes a lot of things stay more or less the same. Sometimes it backfires horribly, as updates are prone to doing in this modern age. You'd think that everybody would have that process down pat and have no issues, but that ain't the case. Not exclusive to iRacing, not exclusive to anyone at all. Errors happen, but uh, remember that. That's my first word of you guys out there who are new to this whole shenanigans of the iRacing build update. Sometimes bad things happen. That's why it's in week 13, which is the unofficial fun week of shenanigans. Hopefully this time around we'll get to hear more, more Aussies screaming at their, <laughs> at their countrymen as they... Uh, just engage and smash them, crash them, because that was a that was a riot. That honestly was. I gonna say it, but I am looking forward to week thirteen. Uh, we'll see what they have because they do switch it out as well. But you know, in terms of the features for the new build, we really know absolutely nothing right now, which is kind of how it's always been. Last week or yeah, last week. Last season, they said that they're going to try and update us more often and keep more in touch and you know try and get the schedules out a little bit earlier and we can get more feedback going and make some changes. But uh, Oh, yeah, schedules. No more four-hour gaps. Hallelujah. Yeah, pretty epic scheduling for once. Thanks, iRacing. Good job. Job well done. Or well enough done. I mean, can't always be happy because then we had only raced Sebring, Sebring night, Sebring, Sebring night. <laughs> that's just me but uh, you know we really don't know too terribly much 
we'll probably find out like after I upload this video the next morning I'll check the forums and be like oh hey great thanks Tony Gardner thanks thank you top job top job of making me look like a ill-informed moron thank you but uh, hey if that's what it takes I am more than willing to put my name out there to get those build release notes and things that will be in there but uh, it'll be interesting because there's supposedly the new tire model version 5 which is supposed to cure everything and solve world hunger uh, probably it won't uh, because the first four versions didn't but hey by the way people who say iRacing never updates their tire model how are they on version 5 and yes they are well, somewhat different quite different honestly but uh, so that supposedly should help out with the high power, low downforce, low weight cars such as the Silver Crown and the uh, Silver Crown Sprint car, which is probably why they actually put the Silver Crown at Watkins Glen, uh, in all honesty. But here's the final lap. This is the final lap going up the side. That's the Kia leader there. Really wish he would have rolled out earlier because then I could have taken a wider line. But that right there, top move. Top move, sir. His apex speed that lap in that corner was about five miles an hour slower than what he had been doing previously the entire race. Just slowed down just enough in my weak or er, in my strongest corner that he basically got a really good block. He backed the corner up, got on the throttle, pulled away down the straightaway. Very, very smart move out there. Very, very smart move. I'm not sure if that is on purpose. I'm going to say it is just to your credit there, but uh, just well done. So new tire model supposedly, maybe Montreal, maybe the Lotus 49, maybe the maybe the rough, the roof, the Porsche wannabe super tuned version. The uh, yeah, it, it's just so up in the air. I expect there'll be some tracks updated. I expect we'll get some sound updates, which honestly might just be my favorite part of the new build, <laughs> because last last time around with the Corvette, obviously just epic sounds, but uh, we'll see. There's just not a lot out there. It's kind of interesting because with uh, the competition that's coming up around iRacing, you know, R-Factor 2 starting to look really strong. Project Car is starting to come around and show that it does have potential and can be taken seriously. You know, obviously, a set of Corsa, which people are you know, really hyped up for, myself included. But uh, that's that. 25 minutes stuck behind this two car. And someone's going to say, oh, well, all you got to do is you just do this. That's how you pass people. No, when you're racing online against people who are actually fast, and, th and this guy's actually pretty dang fast. He's got like a 4,500 I rating. I'm at like 4,000 myself. I mean, that's not pro level, but that is definitely fast. That's, you know, competent driver level, to say the least. You don't just go up the inside. You don't just outbreak him because we're kind of even. That's why I couldn't get by him. This wasn't a Formula 1 situation. This was a... I am driving as hard as I possibly can, and we are the same exact freaking speed. That's why I was trying to save my tires a little bit. Hopefully, he would drive them off the cliff, and then I would go ahead and profit. But that was not the case. Just did not happen. I think a couple more laps I could have got him, but just another fun race. I mean, that really was pushing the car as hard as I possibly could with my talent level. And it was a blast. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you didn't find my commentary too distracting or hindering your enjoyment of the race or whatever. So, uh, yeah. Bye.